Hello and welcome! My name is Johnny and I work in the CG industry as texturing and look dev artist and also as generalist. But enough blah blah about me, so I will show you today a tool called Mari. So you may wonder, hey that's not Mari, that's, that's Maya. And that's because I want to show you here a few little things how I prepare my models to have later a good optimized model in Mari. So you can find all the scene, um, scenes and files and all that stuff in the folder where you can download. So you can fully follow the tutorial. So I like to start here when I get a model with prepare, preparing it, assigning some basic shaders, just simple Lamberts or Blinds when it's a metallic one. And then I will duplicate it and we'll subdivide it one more times or two times, depends on the geometry. So I have here a layer stack, so we can go here to the high. So you can see it's much denser now. That's important to have it later um, subdivided for the bakes and such, such stuff. And after that, I like to merge every single piece together. So it's a bit easier for the GPU to handle one single mesh instead of a mesh with tons of subgroups. So after that, I export it, export the selection into the folder and we can load it into Mari. So let's close here Maya and here we have Mari. When you open it for the first time, the UI will look like something like that. And if you will work with that, that's fine. But I like to rearrange the stuff here a bit to not having too overwhelmed and just have it have visible what I actually need. So Mari is very easy to create a custom UI. We can just close everything and we have it still here. So if you close something and you will get some panic, hey, where's the window going on? You can just simply press here and you have it. So what I like to do is I want to have my node graph. You can open it. Here's the node graph. I want to have it docked here on the right side. And the node properties, I want to have it docked over here. Rescale it to something like that. And what I also like to have is the image manager. Click on it and drag it over here. So we have here some tabs, so I can switch between them. You can create your own UI the way you like to work. I enjoy it this way. So it's it feels a bit more organized and less overwhelming with all the tabs and windows and stuff like that. And if I need something, I can simply press here and do my changes here. All right, so to start your new project, we can here press the new button. So it will prompt up here this dialog and we can navigate to our mesh. And our mesh is on my desktop. Here we have the, where is it, Mari robot. And here the asset and the Mari robot merged. FBX open. So here pretty important if you work with an FBX, press here single frame, it's, otherwise it will load it kind of 200 times <laughs> into Mari, which you don't want. So just here, single frame or type in a one here in the slots. All right, so for the channels, I like to work here with the Arnold one because I want to render it later with the Arnold shader in Maya. So here 4K is fine, but we don't need it here in 16-bit. We can change it to 8-bit. We don't need the specular color. Let's go for the metalness here as well. 8-bit is fine. Specular roughness 8-bit. Uh, scroll down the bump. It's up to you if you want to have it on 16-bit or 32-bit, but pff, let's go for 8-bit. Cool. So now let's move over here to the color settings. So we want to work in Asus because yeah, Asus is the new black. Every, everyone is working with Asus. So I think it's a good idea to have this tutorial here in Asus as well. So lighting, we will have a look on that when we created the project. Project name, we can simply call it like that and create new project. 
So if you want to save your layout, you can go to view and save layout and then you can load it all the time. I forgot to mention that. And here we are. So if you are super new to Mari, you maybe need to change a few little things. Here in the preferences for the navigation, switch here to Maya or leave it on Mari, it's the default, but yeah, I prefer the Maya one. And you maybe your you have maybe a bit a little bit different viewport here. And to change that one, you can go here to view, display properties, and you can set here the background color. You can have it on green or pink, whatever you like. And the grid, I have it turned off. I don't need the grid, so turn it off. So great, here we have our robot. Here a uh, simply overview, we have here the tools. It's a bit like in Photoshop. We have here some settings and we can switch here the different viewport views. The orthographic without uh, perspective distortion, here perspective with distortion. And yeah, self-explanatory, here we have the UV one, orthographic and UV. It's a bit like in Substance Painter where you can switch as well. So we have here three UDIMs, so you can fully follow this tutorial with the non-commercial version. And yeah, let's go here for the autographic. And let's have a look what Mari has slapped here into our note graph. So if you hover over a window here and you press spacebar, you can maximize it, which is pretty cool. So we have here the viewer node, it's a bit like in Nuke. And we have here the shader. It's like in a node graph in Maya or wherever you have the shader node here. And here we have the channels. So the channels, the channels that we actually want to paint. So the bump here, specular roughness, the metalness and the diffuse color. And we can delete these default ones here. So the first thing we want to create here is a multi-channel merge node. And to create this, we can press the tab on the keyboard and it will prop up here this little search bar and we can type in multi-channel merge. So we don't want to principle BRDF. We are working here with the Arnold shader. Press OK. Yeah. So we want to have it fully rolled out so we can connect here these spaghetti to our channels. So here's the diffuse color. Here we have the metalness. And here the specular roughness. And last but not least, the bump. You can also press one on the, no, oh, what was it? Yeah, it was Alt, pressing Alt and then the numbers, you can switch here the different size or the different version of the node. So we can go out here and it will look still like that. And we can create our first material by pressing again, tap on the keyboard and type in material. So here again, we are working with the Arnold one, create with default colors, nope. We will create this by our own, create shader network, uh, we don't ask. Press OK. So, and before we connect here, or we start to connect, we jump here into it. You have two options to jump here into this node. You can control and double click on it, or you can press here S and you are inside of the node. And you can see here a bunch of other nodes. And these are simply the ones which you can output here from this material. So and what I like to do is zoom all the way in here to bump, tap on the keyboard, or you can P on your keyboard for a paint node. And here we want a base of mid-gray. We don't need it as 4K, let's go for 1K. Here pressing on the color thingy. And here we want to have it as 50% gray. Press OK. Here pretty important, scalar data. So we don't want to deal with 
coloring something, we want to have the data which is stored here in the color. Press OK. And we have here the base. We can tap on the keyboard and type in backdrop. And we can rename it to something like mid base. Here we can color it. Let's go for a red or so. Yeah, enable color management. Oh. Great. And let's connect this one here to bump. So we always have a 50% mid value. Let's make it here a bit smaller so we can work with. Let's take it all the way up so we don't have to scroll later all the way down just to alter the bump one. All right, so here under the diffuse, we can create a color node. So this one is a procedural one. We can double click so we can here change the color to whatever we want to change. Let's hook it up to the diffuse. So here for the metalness, I like to create another paint node by pressing P on the keyboard. So here we want to have one which is white, scalar as well. Let's call this one white. And another one, P. Let's make it black. Okay. Double click on it and call it a black. So we want to connect here the black one. And later when we copy paste around the material, we can switch it here to black or white. So we can define if it's a metal or not. So here for the specular, I also want to have a color one. And here it's important to turn off the color management. So we want to have the color data to use it as a scalar one. So here we can go for, let's go for 20 and hook it up here to spec roughness. Let's rearrange here the notes a bit. Something like that. So we have a quick access here to our base. Let's go here out and place it maybe here. And now we can select it, Ctrl C on the keyboard, Ctrl V for copy paste, and we can hook it up here. All right, so we have here our mesh and we want to set up a few things before we start with the funny part. So the first thing here under the shader, here it's still the legacy one with 0 0.8. We want to have it on one so we can see what we are painting here. So the next one is here, the light tab. Let's pin it here and turn off everything. So here on environment, we can turn it on. Let's make the window here a bit bigger so you can see a bit better what I'm doing here. All right, so to load here an HDR, you can type or press here on the X and you can see all the HDRs which ships with Mari, or you can load a custom one by pressing here this button. And here I have the Mari robot, textures and source, and here we have an HDR which is coming from HDR Haven. So it's a free one and we want to have it here on the right IDT because yeah we are working in ASUS utility linear as RGB so it's linear file format the XR but we are dealing here with sRGB primaries press open give it a second to load it in here and here we are so we can switch here to perspective to not get eye cancer so here we have a few options we can do, or a few tweaks we can do. We can bump up the intensity, call it a day, and bye-bye, see you next time. Or 
we leave that one. <laughs> we can fix it here to the scene or to the camera. For the HDR, it makes totally sense to have it a scene, otherwise it will rotate with the camera. That doesn't make sense here on the HDR. So here we have the rotation. We can change the rotation to something which we like, or we can hide it here. I like to hide it. I know others prefer to have it visible. You can also blur it here. It only blurs, blurs it in the viewport. It doesn't affect the lighting at all. So it's just a visual thing. So here, let's jump here quickly into our material and do a 50% gray. So control, double click. And double click here. And go for a 50% gray. So now we can dial in our lights that it makes sense that we don't have an overexposed view here and our textures will end up too dark or too bright, whatever. So this doesn't look too bad. So we can turn it off quickly. So and then we can go for another one. So and here to work with <laughs> with this with these lights, we have this this ball. It's a bit fiddly to move around here, but yeah, it's doable. A bit more from the top. To check it how it looks like, and I like to have this one here fixed to the camera. So if we are moving, it will move with us. Let's see if we can boost up here the intensity to maybe something like that, so we can a bit better see what's going on here. Let's go for a second light or third, if we count the HDR as well. Let's see from where it's coming from. Something like that. Let's see how it looks like with all the other lights. Maybe a bit strong. Zero point seven maybe zero point six yeah why not we can change it later if we want but the lighting is a pretty important part because yeah as i mentioned if you have a super weird lighting setup you will end up with a lot of tweaking later in the shader because your textures look super weird or yeah too bright or too dark whatever so it's a good thing to spend here a bit of time to set up a good lighting setup here. I think we can maybe boost the environment light a tiny bit. So not overexposed here. But we have a bit of a shadow part and a brighter part so we can judge how it looks like when it's a bit more in the dark and how it looks like here a bit more on the bright side. And if we have to feel, we can still rotate it here a bit. I think that's cool for now. So you can go here with something which you like. That's how I prefer it here. That's up to you. So let's close it. And I think we are ready to go. And we see you in the next video where we start creating our first material.